Okay, so in our last video, we got to the stage where we have our own um, custom loader for Flixel. So if I were to refresh this page, you'll see loading and you'll pretty much see no Flixel branding whatsoever, apart from this fav icon here. So I was originally thinking of making a video to talk about how to change this fav icon, but I have already created one. So a while ago, I made a video speaking about how to create a custom icon or how to use a custom icon in Hackspixel. And I think this video does a better explanation of telling you how to do that than I would doing another one now. So go ahead and watch this video to learn how to change this to whatever you want. Um, here I advise using an SVG, but you can of course use PNG, JPEG, whatever. It's just a bit more difficult to do it that way for multiple platforms. So um, if you're able to go ahead and create an SVG, please do that. Um, but yeah, watch this. And once you have a custom icon, that I think is pretty much it. Um, a few things to do before we build or go ahead and release this game. Inside the code, in the project XML, we of course want to change a few things. So we'll change the name of our game to, I don't know, uh, platformer tutorial. You can change it to whatever you want. This will be the file name of the game. Um, this will be the class that it uses at the beginning. So that's uh, main here. And the version you can be whatever you make it whatever you want. So I'm gonna make it one, two, three. Cool. So um building the game is as simple as running lime build whatever platform you want. So HTML5. And as you can see, if, if I were to do this right now, um we kind of already do it with the debug flag. And um yeah, I if, if I were to do it right now, what it would do is it would build the game, actually, let me do it. But I, I'm assuming that it's gonna build the game and everything that gets built in Flixel goes into this export folder here. So this is the HTML5 we've been using for, for um, debugging, so this is that. Uh, and if I show you in the finder, I probably already have that open. Anyway, if I show this to you in the finder, you will see this is what we need when you're sharing the game you don't need these two files just this what's the bin and you will see that the output here is is not minified so the overall size of this would be bigger um so 4.2 megabytes which is which is just not that big actually but the overall size of this would be bigger uh oh no sorry it would be smaller if we minified it and the commands to do that i believe html5 dash minify minify so we hit that and then it will build the game again a second time html5 builds quite quick so i wouldn't worry about this taking too much time so once this is done when we go back into our um, export js you'll see that it's compressed the whole um the whole code and if you look in at the size of it now it's 2.4, so that's almost half the size of what it was before. And this is what you want to do when you're exporting a game for the web. Um, now, if we're exporting it for, so in my case, a Mac, so a native Mac machine, same thing, so it'll be Lime, build, Mac. Now, I'm not gonna do it now because the first time you run this command, it will take a really long time, but I've got one that I've done before. In a previous example, so here, so this is the HTML5 build, this is the Mac OS build. So once again, we want to use everything in bin, not these two files. So bin, and then this is the file you share around. So if we had changed our fav icon or our SVG icon, it would be here. But in our case, because I haven't changed it, it's using the default icon, default fixed icon. So once I open this, you'll see that our game is running in a native Mac window. We can play it as per usual, connect all the stars, we can pause, and this is honestly truly impressive. The fact that we can have one code base to create a HTML5 game and a native Mac game is, to me, still mind-blowing. But there you have it. Now, if you wanted to export this to Windows, um, you, you couldn't really do it on a Mac, like natively. So if you want to export to Windows, make sure you have a Windows machine. Um, and if you're on Windows want to export to Mac, you can't, you have to have a Mac machine. So with a Mac, you can export to, um, of course, Mac OS, 
iOS for, for Apple iPhones, and you can do Android as well on Macs. Now, there is actually a way you can export to Windows on a Mac, and it's quite tedious. You have to have a virtual machine. I have written a post on how to do it here, which I will share in the description. Um, but if you are a Windows user, you will, regardless of if you're on a Mac or not, um, you will need to install Visual Studio um, 2019. So the community is 2019, and you have to install it with these specific things to be able to export to Windows. But I will have this link in the description. So there you have it. Congratulations on finishing your first game in Hacks Flixel. Sorry, in Hacks Flixel. I hope you found this useful. And you're probably thinking, well, what are the next steps? Well, the next steps are, of course, to create your own game. Um, hopefully, you will have enough information here to go ahead and do that. Um, if you do stumble across any issues or have any questions, I highly recommend going to the Hacks Flixel um, Discord channel. So, sorry, the Hack server has a channel for Flixel. So, go into that. It's quite a vibrant community, and people are always willing to answer questions, especially to, to beginners. So, do that. And if you have any questions for me, please feel free to hit me up on, on Twitter, on YouTube, also on, on my Discord, which I will also link to the description in this video. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching, and yeah, I'll see you in whatever course I make next to deal with game development.